Last night, Joe Biden promised to reverse the Trump administration's foreign policy on the question of China. According to Biden, the U.S. will now follow something called the international rules of the road. What does that mean exactly? Well, you can guess what it means. More subservience to the emerging nation of China. Most people don't understand how big this is or how far back it goes or the implications for them. Lee Smith understands. He's an author and a journalist. He's written one of the best pieces of the year on this topic for Tablet Magazine. The piece is called The 30 Tyrants. You'll have to stop reading midway through because it's upsetting, but as you read it, you'll also know it's true. So we recommend that you do. He joins us tonight to explain. Lee, thanks so much thanks for Tucker. coming on and for the mental energy required to connect all these dots in the yeah. piece. And again, I really hope our readers read it for themselves. But in the meantime, thanks. will you summarize yeah. your position? Yeah, I mean, basically what I wanted to explain is I wanted to explain why so many things look crazy. Uh, many things, for instance, that you cover on your show all the time. For instance, tonight, why people are coming across the why people are coming across the border in such profound numbers. It all looks crazy until you realize there's a reason it's going on, and the reason is is because the oligarchy that runs this country now is not primarily loyal to the United States. They do not care about the amount of damage they do to America. They don't care about the amount of damage they do to Americans. That's part of the system. Their primary loyalty is to their relationship to the Communist Chinese Party. That is the, their center of gravity. It's the source of their wealth privilege and prestige. So c c keep, keep connecting, if you would. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I hope sure, that, yeah. again, people will read this because print is really the only medium right. that can fully explain a thesis mm. as complex as yours. But I think you're right. So what else yeah. would connect to that point that you just made? Well, I mean, the, the big thing is starting, I mean, one of the key dates is, of course, it starts with Henry Kissinger's uh, and Richard M. Nixon's uh, opening to China. But really, a big, a big date is 1994, when Bill Clinton did decided, decided to de-link human rights and trade regarding China, right? And the, the yes. ambition, you hear people say all the time, oh, uh, we were hopeful that China would adopt more democratic policies. It was nonsense. The premier of China at the time was Zhang Jimin. This was the man who was catapulted to power after sending tanks into Tiananmen Square. So the American elite knew exactly what they were getting into. To. What they looked at, they looked at an enormous, cheap labor pool, and they said, we're going to get rich. And that's precisely what happened. We're, uh, we are more than a quarter of a century along, and that's precisely what's happened. Now, one of the interesting things that happened during, during the Donald Trump presidency, because Donald Trump started calling these people out, I think that Donald Trump didn't even have that clear a sense of how tied in, how extensive this network was. One of the examples I, I, I mentioned is, for instance, whoever would have put uh, Apple CEO Tim Cook and LeBron James in the same family album. But there they are, sure enough, because they both rely, uh, their wealth relies on the two same things, cheap Chinese labor and a growing Chinese consumer market. And if you look across, this is not just, it's not just entertainment, it's not just tech. Uh, it goes into the corporate worlds. It goes into finance. Unfortunately, it, it affects our government throughout. One of the most astonishing revelations was a, was a memo that former DNI John Ratcliffe wrote uh, regarding, uh, regarding the CIA, regarding their intelligence analysis. CIA management uh, was apparently bullying analysts, saying they didn't like their analysis of China because they were worried about the policies it might encourage, meaning Donald Trump's policies, who was hard on, chi on China. Therefore, CIA management was protecting China from solid analysis. It's astonishing. But take it one step further. Remember who owns... Uh, who owns the cloud on which all of the CIA's information is collected, and that's Jeff Bezos, who is China's number one distributor in the United States. In, in 10 seconds, does it shock you that the new defense secretary has basically said the greatest threat we face is not China, but white supremacists in this country? No, not at all. If you look at the Biden administration, the way it's staffed, and unfortunately, if you look at the first family, you see that there are deep and extensive ties to the Chinese Communist Party. It doesn't surprise me at all. Amazing piece. Lee, I appreciate your coming on tonight. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much, Tucker. Thanks.